Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today, this is a voice recording to replicate an animation I saw on Twitter. If you would like to know more about the reference, you can go to the link in the description. Knowing that this animation is very similar and actually even easier than the tube flow animation, so I would like to take this opportunity to revise the methods uh, I've used in the last tutorial. The last tutorial, if you have watched, you may realize ah, the end node tree is so tiny that it does not really require a 40 minutes long tutorial to teach your audience how to replicate that. However, on the other hand, I want you to realize sometimes when you're looking at a magic show, you realize ah, these, these are so magical. But if you really know the trick, then it's so easy. So this is the issue. When you're looking at an animation, sometimes the problem solving part is much more difficult than the actual implementation. Uh, so that's why would I spend too much time on the last one. But this time we are going to make a lot of shortcuts and to, to replicate an animation which is very similar to the last one. So let's start. So as always, I'm going to use the presets I built for my own, so you can download them for free from the link in the description. But uh, for the moment, we're not going to use geometry nodes because, uh, in fact, this setup will not be 100% procedural because within Blender, we do not have a 100% uh, procedural way to create a fracture, but it will still be a kind of okay. So I'm going to use the edits, preference, cell fracture add-on. So if it comes with Blender, you just enable that, so it just be fine. And for cell fracture add-on, you either use the particle system or you use the annotation to guide that. But uh, generally, I will use the particle system because it's not convenient. Uh, let's just uh, increase that to 3000. Okay. Hit F3 and just uh, search for cell fracture. Then just the uh, cell fracture it. So it's source limits, which means how many pieces you generate. You just generate 300. Another thing I actually forgot is I need to create two materials. You do not necessarily do that. Uh, the reason I do that is because in case you want to have a different materials outside and inside, then you need to put this material index into one so that you select the second material for every piece that you generate. So I take that 300 and then hit OK. You realize my voice is actually not very good because uh, after doing the last uh, cube flow tutorials, my throat was very bad. Also, these days, even uh, in the work, I talk a lot. That's why I'm not very active in making tutorials. After all, it's not a, I do not need a throat to make animation, but I need a throat to make tutorials. Okay. So once we fracture everything, just uh, do not hit anything, just uh, hit M so that you group them into a, a collection so that you retain the original cube and you can plug them into other places but now you have all these kind of fractured pieces being generated okay so what's the geometry node? so now we can pull our geometry nodes objects which is the name the gm we're going to put all these kind of instances or collections using collection input and we take the fracture so now we create a, a kind of a scapegoat or mirage of our collection instances okay so once we have all these kind of fracture instances we may separate the children but it must not reset children otherwise you will lose all this kind of uh, object uh, transform so we separate the children so that we can manipulate each of the instance individually inside of as a whole. Okay. So in this case, we're going to move this instance. So we take the set of position and combine XYZ to offset that. So we just use a time info node so that I do not need to keyframe anything for this entire animation. So let's make it to be one thousand. So now our cube is moving. Okay. And then we create a curve because we're going to use the uh, curve modifier. 
So let's add a curve modifier. Where is my curve modifier? Yes. Curve modifier, select the Bezier curve. Immediately, you do not see anything. The reason is because whatever you are outputting are the instances, so you do not have access to all these type of vertices in order to deform that with a modifier. So you need to realize the instance. Okay. And then this is the result that we are getting. Uh, can we actually try to improve that? Good. Yeah, so this is how it looks like right now, uh, which looks kind of very ugly, but what else I can do? Uh, it's also possible that you add a subdivision surface, but probably not a very good idea. So I don't know what you're going to do with that, but probably this is what we can do for the moment. Okay, so by after we've done this, and then you can see it's moving along with this kind of a circle. Okay, so this is kind of cool. Well, what we can also do is we can scale the instance a little bit. So let's take the 0 0.9. So we can see all these small pieces cleared. Okay. And the next step is try to scale down some of the instances based on a fall. Okay. So basically what we're trying to do is to make kind of proximity fall. So we can try to use a hmm, proximity fall. We can add another scale instance because I want to keep this 0 0.9 and select our controller to take the fall into the scale. So minimum is zero. The maximum needs to be one, which means if they are being covered within the area of my fall, so for example, if I move that here, then you can realize they are being scaled down. So this might be kind of very confusing why it happens, but if you remove the curve modifier, then this is how it looks. Okay. Uh, actually, I try to color wrap that so that it becomes sharper. Okay. So more area will be deleted. So this is kind of ideology, but uh, because this is looping, you finally it moves away from the region, then you do not have the effect. But it's also kind of unrealistic that I plug a different empties every places. So we're not going to use the empties. Instead, we're going to use the location offset and the scale offsets. Okay. So the location offset and the scale offset is basically just uh, the same way. So you still scale offset with one, but you combine XYZ and then you can affect certain regions in the same way. Okay. The benefit uh, the the downside of this part is that I do not necessarily know how far is 13.6 in the viewport. That's why I use the object as a common way of control. But in this case, we need a numerical control. So this is the method that we are going to do. Actually, when I started to think about this animation, I'm really thinking about doing exactly the same thing as the last time uh, that we group them together and create a kind of loop. But uh, later, if I'm thinking about this, since we only want this kind of appearing, disappearing, appearing patterns throughout this entire length, then this is actually a sine wave. So we do not need to form a loop in this particular case. We can directly use the sine function. So we take a sine function, or you can use a mass sine. Mass function sine. Okay. But essentially, they are very similar, despite a little bit more functionality. So in this case, we're just going to use the sine function, and immediately everything disappears. So there are several things we're going to do. One is we're going to use the position x value as a trigger. Okay. So now we have this the same patterns. And if we, because so previously we we're moving everything with this set of position, then they're moving. Actually, this is probably the easiest method and you can change the frequency 
uh, which determines the kind of gap size. Uh, because the sine function, in this case, we remapped it to 0 to 1. So we just use the color ramp if you want to increase the regions or decrease the region, or you may want to interpolate the transition much sharper or uh, more smooth. So you can use the east east. Actually, sine function by itself is already east east, so you don't need to change the pattern, but it's your choice. It's there is no right or wrong answer specifically. Okay, uh, here I might use cosine wave so that they show something at the beginning. Okay, so I would say this is probably it. Uh, the next issue is really more like uh, how to manipulate this fracturing pattern. I do not want to fracture that again, so let's just cheat a little bit by scaling up because I do not want to only one part of being disappeared, I want to only the middle part of being disappeared. And then we can scale down the other two sides. And finally, turn back on this curve modifier so we can see this effect. So there are lots of parameters that you can potentially play around but uh, that's probably it aware that. So even if we turn on, it's not a very obvious, so it's, yes. So now we have a part which is always missing. Okay, so this is pretty cool. So this is pretty sad that originally I'm thinking about repeating the last tutorial to reinforce uh, your knowledge, but uh, this time, this is a bummer that we are using another different method to achieve this specific pattern. Uh, but this happens sometimes, even for similar animation, there may be a better method or worse methods according. So you, that's why sometimes it's very difficult to think or difficult to do a tutorial because there are so many variations and the different choices that you can potentially make. Anyway, so next thing we're going to do is just to tilt these curves. So we basically do the same as the last time we are doing with animation nodes. The reason we need animation nodes is really just a temporary. It's only because these curve modifiers are older system. Uh, geometry nodes are new system. So the issue is that currently we can create all these kind of curve line objects, which is essentially a curve object within geometry nodes. But the older system will always recognize them as a mesh or they may not recognize them at all. So the older system will not work with any kind of curve you generate within geometry nodes. Uh, it's just a kind of temporary incompatibility. It will very likely be fixed at some moment, but at least not in 2.0. So that's why you have to use whatever other system, whether you're using animation nodes, search hawk, manually, these are all just kind of choice that you can potentially have. So here, let's just take a spline from points. Curve off the top, but take the vector points, splines. And here, what do we do is we increase that to 5,000 or 5,000 here. Take a float range vector into the amount, and then we're going to use the stop mode. You do realize that in my preset there is also a float range node because this is basically where I got inspiration from. And finally, take that tilting. The reason I'm taking a stop mode because I want to tilt that to 2 pi. Make it a cyclic radius to 1. And then we select the new target object. So now this is what we're getting. And you can try to play around the radius and all these kind of parameters so that you finally get a kind of nice result. Okay. So this is kind of interesting. Uh, you can definitely work with different other kinds of curves, like whether you're using any extra curves, torus knots, or whatever other stuff. Basically, these kind of extra curves are from the curve extra object. You just enable that because it comes with Blender. 
and then you can use the evaluates curve evaluate spot yes you evaluate the spinals or you can create all these kind of curves with mathematical function by your own with i dimensionals so the whole point is that as long as you have a curve you are able to create whatever things you want okay uh, once in the future that the curve modifier can recognize all the sound curve generated by geometry nodes then you do not need animation nodes at all so this is really just a temporary solution but uh, this looks kind of cool anyway. uh, and then you can increase the frequency actually so that the multiple pieces are being made uh, and another important thing is that uh, the fracturing is very important so it's very unfortunate that we do not have a procedural fracturing for the moment and not anywhere in the short term as well but uh, I don't know what else I can say so I hope you enjoy this video I'll publish it next time bye bye